Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a really fun problem. An odometer displays the number of miles a car has traveled. But you have a car with a faulty odometer that always skips the digit four regardless of position. That is, the display always goes from the digit three to the digit five. So the odometer will go from mile three to mile five then, if we skip ahead, it will go from mile 39 all the way to displaying mile 50. The question is, if the faulty odometer displays 002005, how many miles has the car actually traveled? This is adapted from the 2005 AMC 12A Problem 19. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So one way to approach the problem, which is the long way, is to count all of the numbers that have the digit four and subtract that from the total. We want to subtract the miles we have skipped. So let's consider the numbers from 1 to 2005. If we look at the numbers that are 2000 or larger, then only the number 2004 would have been skipped. That's one number. So now let's consider all the whole numbers that are greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2000. How many of them contain the digit 4? So we'll work this out case by case. Let's consider a four digit number where the one's digit is equal to four. How many different numbers can we make that are between one and 2000, where we include one and do not include 2000? So the thousands digit could be equal to zero or one. That's two possibilities. For the hundreds, we have 10 possible digits if we count the 10 digits going from zero to nine. So we multiply two by 10. For the tens digit, we also have 10 possible digits we could put in here. So that is another 10 possibilities we multiply by. So we have two times 10 times 10, which equals 200. Let's do the same calculation where we have a four in the tens column. So for the thousands column, we could have a zero or one, that's two possibilities. For the hundreds column, we have 10 possible digits. Don't worry about double counting yet. So we have 10 options here. And in the units column, we have 10 more possibilities. So we multiply by 10. So there are 200 numbers like this. Finally, we do the same calculation for a four in the hundreds column. We have two options for the thousands place. We have 10 options for each of the tens and the ones place. So again, we have two times 10 times 10, which equals 200. So each of these has 200 possibilities. Now let's consider the overlap cases. So if we have a four digit number and we have a four in the tens column and the ones column, how many numbers can we make? For the thousands column, we have two possibilities. And then for the hundreds column, we have 10 possibilities. So we multiply two by 10, which gives us 20. The same will be true if we put a four in the hundreds column and the ones column. We have two possibilities for the thousands column then we have 10 possibilities for the 10 column. So two times 10 will be equal to 20. We have one more case where we have the four in the hundreds column and in the tens column. So we have two possibilities for the thousands column multiplied by the 10 possibilities for the units column. And this gives another 20. We will now consider a number where we have a four in the hundreds, tens, and the one spot. We have two possibilities for the thousands column, which will be zero or one. So that's two possibilities. So we can take these calculations and we can figure out how many numbers less than 2000 contain the digit four. So let's say the set A is all numbers that have a four in the units column. B is the set of numbers where we have a four in the tens column. And C is the set where we have four in the hundreds column. And we're only considering N going greater than or equal to one or less than 2000. So we figured out what the size of A is, what the size of B is, and what the size of C is. We've also figured out 
the number of intersections between these sets. So we use the principle of inclusion and exclusion. We want the size of A union B union C, and that'll be equal to the size of A plus the size of B plus the size of C, minus the size of the intersection of A and B, minus the size of the intersection of A and C, minus the size of the intersection of B and C, and then we need to add back in the intersection of all three sets. There's a nice visual way to see the principle of inclusion and exclusion for three sets. So let's say we just added the size of A, the size of B, and the size of C. So we're going to add one for each of the regions that's not overlapping. We're going to double count the regions that are overlapping with two sets, and we triple count the overlap of all three sets. So we then want to subtract out the overlap between any two sets, but when we do that, we are going to subtract out the overlap of all three sets a third time. So we need to add that back in. And this will give us a proper count of A union B union C. So we've calculated each of these quantities. The size of A equals the size of B equals the size of C equals 200. The pairwise intersections of two sets, the size of each of those will be 20. And the intersection of all three sets will be equal to 2. So we simply substitute into the formula and we get 200 plus 200 plus 200 minus 20 minus 20 minus 20 plus 2 and that equals 542. So finally we take 2005 which is a number displayed on the faulty odometer and we subtract out all numbers that have a digit 4. So we want to subtract out 542 that are less than 2000 and then we need to subtract out the 1, which is 2004, that's larger than 2000. So we take 2005 minus 1 for the number 2004 minus the size of A union B union C. So that's 2005 minus 1 minus 542. And that gives us the answer of 1,462. And that's the answer. So now that we solved the problem the long way, the shortcut solutions will be all the more rewarding. So instead of counting the numbers with the digit 4 and subtracting them out, let's directly count the numbers without the digit 4. So let's take the numbers going from 1 to 2005. And just as before, let's consider 1 less than or equal to n less than 2000. That is, consider the numbers less than 2000 first. So we have a four-digit number, and we want to count how many of these are without the digit 4. So in the 1000 spot, we could have two possibilities. We could have 0 or 1. What about the 100 spot? Well, we could take any digit besides the digit 4. So there will be 9 digits that we could put in here. So we take 2 multiplied by 9. The same is true for the 10s column. We multiply by 9 options. And in the 1s column, we also have 9 options. So we have 2 multiplied by 9 times 9 times 9. This equals 1458. We now just need to make a couple of adjustments to get our answer. Let us consider that the number 0000, we don't want to include this because that'll just be the starting number. So we subtract 1 for this. So this will be 1457. We now need to count the numbers that are 2000 or larger. So we count 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, we skip 2004 and we have 2005. So this will be another five numbers. So we take 1457 and we add five and this gives us 1462. And once again, we've gotten to the answer, but a lot faster. So as if this method wasn't easy enough, let me just show you one more genius method. This is to use the number base nine. So how does this work? So the odometer always skips the digit four. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, we skip the digit 4, and we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If you're counting in base 9, you will always skip the digit 9. So we would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we wouldn't count the digit 9. So you could see that we essentially have a correspondence between the miles that the odometer would show and base 9. If we go from the numbers 10 to 20, we'll see that the odometer is going to skip the number 14. And if we look at the similar numbers in base 9, we're also going to skip one number, which will be 19. So this pattern will continue. 
So essentially, we can count numbers on the odometer as if we're counting in base nine. We're gonna have to make some slight adjustment here, but I'll show you how to do that. So the odometer is showing 2005, which means it has just skipped the number four. So imagine we're counting in base nine and we get to 2004. So we want to take the number 2004 in base nine and convert that into base 10 or in decimal numbers. So all we want to do is convert 2004 from base 9 to base 10, and essentially we'll have the answer. So how do we do that? Well, 2004 in base 9 is exactly equal to 2 multiplied by 9 to the power of 3 plus 0 multiplied by 9 squared plus 0 multiplied by 9 to the power of 1 plus 4 multiplied by 9 to the power of 0, which equals 1. So this simplifies to be 1458 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4, which gives us the answer of 1462. And we have a completely different way of solving the puzzle using a very interesting technique from number theory. So we have mathematically calculated the answer. And there's a special satisfaction in actually seeing the answer for yourself. Here we have the faulty odometer at the top. And at the bottom, we have a regular odometer. The regular odometer will count one mile for every mile that's traveled. And at the top, the faulty odometer will always skip the digit four. So we start out and we can see the comparison between the faulty odometer and the actual odometer, which would show the miles traveled. So we just go ahead and let these run. And we see that when the faulty odometer is showing 2,005 miles traveled, the actual odometer is showing 1,462. So that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.